All right, guys, since I've been on a roll showing you watches that are not easy to find, I figure why not continue and share with you this Borealis Scorpion Fish version 2. So big thanks to my friend and one of the founder members of the Random Rob channel, John, for sending this and the Rado over for me to check out and share with you guys. So this is my first time, as far as I can remember, handling one of these Scorpion Fish version 2. And actually, I'm talking to Carlos, the owner of Borealis right now, Kind of putting a bug in his ear saying, hey, you could probably re-release this watch. Um, I think it's maybe been long enough and time enough that, uh, that it would do well. Because what this watch kind of harkens to and what John had bought this as a placeholder to decide if he wanted to spend the approximately $3,000 on the, the ZRC Grand Fonds 300. So very similar watch, very similar case shape. The big difference is they're going to use an ETA movement and they're going to have that crown down here at the 6 o'clock with a pretty crazy um, extension here for the bracelet or strap. So the crown just kind of protrudes out at the 6 o'clock. Obviously, it's a lot easier uh, for like Carlos, Borealis, or any brand to place the crown at the 3 o'clock with this case shape because you can just keep that standard lug width there. Otherwise, it gets a little more involved and crazy. Plus then you're kind of copying, whereas this is definitely playing more of a homage to the ZRC, but being its own thing as well. It just has some of those design cues. So you're looking at basically a 42 millimeter case, but that's kind of counting that little uh, peak here, this little bump out on the left hand side, which is interesting. If you measure just the bezel, it's like 41.6 and it wears like a 42. Um, I have to mention, before I continue on with the sizes, I have to mention the weight. Just holding this thing here, it is so substantial when it comes to the weight department. It is sized for my wrist, I think. Certainly John's wrist. It is 206 grams. That's with this bracelet, but it is a beast of a watch. All right, back to the size. 49.2 lug to lug. You can see it's a nearly flat plane case here. It has an arch to it. But that's really just the mid case design on the top side. If you look at the bottom, it's flat. And then it has like these uh, screw bolts here or whatever for the links. So if you count, because the end links protrude out past the case, if you count from here, it's like 56 millimeter. It's long. But we'll do a wrist shot. I think you'll find that it wears on my wrist fine. If you have a 6 inch wrist, no way. This is not going to work for you. Um, 15 millimeter thick, but that's including that double dome sapphire crystal, which is pretty thick too. And uh, in case I didn't mention, 300 meter water depth rating. Lug width here, 24 millimeter. Bracelet tapers down very nice to a 20 millimeter. And then you have this fully milled out with micro adjust, three micro adjust, butterfly clasp. Now you guys know I typically do not care for butterfly clasp, but this is the most masculine butterfly clip clasp I've ever handled. It is such a beast. It just kind of snaps open there and has a double pusher there. So we'll do a wrist shot here in a moment. Here's a look at the case back. It's using the Miyota 9015. I think they also did a date version of this. This one does have the ghost date position when you unscrew it. Crown size on this is seven and a half millimeter too. All right, let's pop this guy on the wrist. BGW9 Loom on this. It does have a sapphire bezel in. Oh, <clears throat> wrist check. I was wearing the Timex uh, trench watch. So it's going to have a sapphire crystal, obviously, and a sapphire um, bezel insert, which is also going to be loomed, and it's all going to be BGW9. Yeah, it's pretty much size for my wrist, but you can see, oh man, that is so, it is so heavy. I've not been wearing heavy watches, so when you put this on, you're like, oh. It just feels like it's just weighing you down. Um, but you acclimate to it pretty quick. I don't know if you guys are used to wearing heavier watches. You know, I like to wear titanium watches, so super light. But then I'll, I like to wear, like, heavier watches. I mean, heck, even that uh, Seamaster 300 is actually kind of heavy. It's not heavy like this. This is definitely a brick on your wrist, but um, very cool. It feels, it just makes the watch feel, like, tougher and stronger, too. I'm not sure that it actually is. I'm sure it does help out with some of the, certainly the rigidity and the strength of the watch as far as impact resistance and everything. But 
I don't know how much it helps. Screw pins on the bracelet, and the bracelet is just phenomenal. The bracelet, seriously, um, is... I think I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this bracelet is the best bracelet I have seen from Borealis. So, Carlos, if you watch this video, whoever made this bracelet, go back to them. Um, not that your other bracelets are bad, but this bracelet feels as good as the quality on some of the luxury watches that I've handled. Um, you know, it's just that it's that good. The bracelet is amazing. So, uh, bezel action, 120 click very smooth there's zero play in it plenty of traction on it easy to turn and if we take a closer look at the dial you can see it's a sandwich dial with applied indices so that's pretty fun and then you have a nice polished very broad borderline like minecraft style uh, handset there but it gives you a ton of real estate for that loom so you're going to really love this thing in the loom department. And then as much brushing and everything and tool watch there is on this watch, you actually have that nice polished relief. So it gives it a little more light play. Actually, it kind of looks like it's brushed almost, but it's uh, it's definitely a polished relief. Now, you got to keep in mind, this is a used watch too. John picked this up off from probably eBay or something. That's about the only place you're going to be able to find these. Oh, no, he did say he picked it up off the Borealis... Uh, Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook, there is actually a Borealis fan page or something like that. I think that's where he said he picked it up for. I don't know how much he paid for it. Uh, knew these were probably in the $400 range and used. I looked real quick. It looks like they're still in the $400 range. I don't know what the new price was on it. But let's kill the lights and check the loom. Before we do that, here it is next to a Seiko SKX, just for a little size reference. For those people that have the SKX or are familiar with it. So if we kill the lights, you can see plenty of loom. Obviously you have loom on the applied indices, you have loom in the sandwich, you have loom on the bezel, and then a ton of loom on the hands. The hands are going to be the star of the show on this one as far as the loom department just because of the real estate they provide. But awesome watch, thanks John for sending this in, and Carlos, or Borealis if you're listening, release this watch again. It is that good. See you on the next vid.